Hello everyone, this is Mr. 13 Things coming at you today with a little bit of sketch up to take a break from all the HTML and linear algebra that we've been doing. And this is uh, kind of just to show you a little bit how you can kind of let SketchUp mimic to some degree um, the kind of thing you would see in parametric design. Though I want to point out that there's an add-on called SKENG, which is pretty radical for SketchUp. And so the basics of SketchUp, you're going to see one of the most important basics when you come into any drawing right away to make sure that you set up your, that you know what model you're in, what, what units you're in. And I'm going to go ahead right now, and the other thing that's an important thing to do right away, you're going to see is to go ahead and draft a box that's along your coordinates per se. You notice there that kind of assumed it was a square and learning to I'm going to right click over the top and make a group or make components move that off to the side here this is just giving me an ability to kind of grab any number of planes of the standard orthographic planes that we have I'm saying orthogonal planes that we have here later on you see when you're breaking things into components they don't have to be X along X Y and Z they can be along some other set of axes and once again now these are orthogonal vectors or orthogonal components as well. So I'm going to do edit, undo, edit, undo, and so you're going to see a lot of making this little box and grouping it going on. What we're going to look at today is just literally how to go about and make a, a pipe component basically. And that's usually done by um, a path of the spring line or the center line of the pipe and then a cross section. And with those two things together, you can uh, pretty much make a whole bunch of uh, um, flexible hose pipes or whatever you, you might think. A straight pipe is a little bit easier, but we're going to go do something that's a little bit different than straight pipe. We'll do it just in one plane, and then we'll show you later on how to do it also in uh, more like three dimensions. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're just going to draft start there I'm taking this up in the right direction I'm gonna go ahead and make it a 48 inches that way and I'm gonna go ahead and make it 36 inches that way and I'm gonna go ahead and make it up uh, I don't know 56 inches that way and I'm gonna make it 60 inches that way at that point in time right you can kinda of see that you wanna check that everything is flattened out and you're gonna now Realize that mathematically, really, this is a good way to start designing pipe, but then in the middle there, you're going to have to want to do something called a fillet. And fillet can be done on any number of ways. But one way to go ahead and do a fillet, I think, would be, let's say we're going to have a 12-inch radius here, is to go ahead right away and draft a circle here and call it a radius of 12. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and get rid of these things, right-click, erase right click erase and now get rid of that and now as you go ahead and draft a arc kind of take it along there grab that grab that and you can see that it kind of one of the things it gives you is that it's gonna uh, you do it correctly it should want right there when you get that tangent at vertex it actually did that correctly I'm gonna go ahead and do this next one it's six inches what I did is I went to my not logical, it's the point of intersection if you're looking at, and I'm going to go ahead and make this a 6 inch radius. Make that 6, I'm typing 6 in the VCB. Probably a better way to do this, but for now, what we're trying to teach is learning that you want to kind of make sure that if you're doing a pipe, theoretically these points are tangent. And then without finding the script that there is one. I know there's a script that there's you grab the endpoint, endpoint, and it right away wants to find that natural spot. And I'm gonna go ahead and do one more and we'll make this 18 inches. Just to show that there are different I'm gonna type this 18. What I'm doing right away here. Right click erase. Right click erase. And again this program if you grab that, it kind of likes, it kind of figures out right away that what you want to do. It's amazing in that, in that regard. Now what you've got in your, at least in your mind, is this thing goes all together. And sometimes it's a good idea. You can actually go ahead and bind this up into a, a path. But for now, 
we know that that is actually your cross section and it wouldn't be a or your spring line or the center line of your pipe at that point it's a great idea to start getting used to the idea concept of I'm saying move should be moving around here the concept of layers so we're gonna go windows turn the layers off window turn the layers on and it was down here I'm gonna move this into so you can see it I'm gonna add a layer there I'm just gonna call it center line and I'm going to make that current by clicking that which is not necessarily necessary so much as I'm going to move this out of here I'm going to grab across all of that and now hit right click over the top entity info it's going to take all that and we're going to grab it all and put it on center line while we're here we can also make a another layer which is called pipe and we'll make that current at this point and we'll move on from there so now we have a bunch of edges collected we haven't actually made them very often you can right click and make them uh, a curve or, and they might be a curve right now as it is it's not but we'll see where that sometimes you're going to collect these things up here comes the key step you need to then draft this cross section and you know in a particular spot so it ends up being perpendicular to this. So there's all kinds of different ways to do it. In this case, we're gonna have that box over here. So we're just gonna go ahead and draft up a two inch radius. So I'm gonna take that out here and then go two and I'm gonna zoom in there. And now that you see that you've got that two inch radius and it's on that, it looks a little odd the way that I'm gonna erase it again. We'll try that again. I'm gonna click here, that's two inches. We've got it on the face in the group, and that's why it looks odd. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to offset it. Sorry, offset it. We'll offset it. Set it 0.25. So we've got a pretty thin thing there, and we might want to bring it all when we go. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and grab this, and we're going to do the move command. And what we want usually want to do is we want to hold a control or the alt. To grab the center, then we grab the center there. We're going to bring that all the way over to there. Almost done now. What we've got now is two faces. That face we don't need. And if I look at here, my face style is set up correctly. Now we're going to grab using the control key on a Windows, I think, but we're going to grab. For now, we're going to learn to turn the axis off. We're going to grab all the edges that we want to sweep along. So I'm going to hit a plus, and that will be Control or Alt. I'll mark this up later to tell you it's different on a Mac from on a Windows. And when I'm on a Mac running Windows, I get a little confused there. So I've selected all my edges. I now go to the Follow Me tool. I click on there and voila you have the pipe now the difference between true parametric design and the like is that right now in true parametric design if I went now and change this cross section here in the original parameter or remember original cross section in true parametric design this would go ahead and update automatically so later on you're gonna see it's a worthwhile thing to keep actually some base construction around at this point so later on if you need to update you can change it but that said you can imagine now that we've got this laid out and we're not going to do parametric but we can realize is the, the concept here of having this one shape that's just going to be repeating perhaps we're going to go ahead on a regular basis we're going to go over the top right click make component and then we're going to set our component axes hopefully some, along some key thing along that pipe and in this case we've kind of got some key access and we'll call it pipe one now that might not have been the way we want to lay this out but we're going to set create that and now we've got something called pipe one and if you remember this has all been done on along on the layer called pipe now we're going to go ahead and make another one maybe it's called assembly and we're going to make that current. And what I'll just do is I'll kind of lay this out. I'm going to go ahead and lay out just to stop top of some of the base. I'll make this 12 inches in diameter. 
and I'm going to offset it two inches, but then also offset it one inch. So I've got something to grab to there. And I'm going to now remember the layer we're on. Where we're on assembly there, we're going to go on to assembly. That's fine, what we want. And I now I'm going to bring up the components window. And we've made a component. And we want to go to in model. Bring in our component. And if you notice there, our component is some way oddly laid out so it's kind of laying in a certain direction but we'll just go ahead and rotate and we're going to go ahead and move this around we'll bring it to some known spot hopefully that was something we want all right we'll go with that now the problem is going to be rotating it about that axis right so if you think about it we're going to go ahead and turn on the axis and see where we're at per se and the axis was set over here, right? It's not over here. We could now go ahead and set our axis along that if we wanted, if we just wanted to rotate it up. So that we go about doing that by grabbing the axis here, clicking our point, finding some spot along there, some spot hopefully out here. It really doesn't make much of a difference. And now we have a set of orthogonal components for, with which to kind of tip that thing up. So. We go ahead and draft a new box. It'll tend to find the orthogonal components. We don't necessarily need to make it a box, but I'll go ahead and do that, go over the top. You want to do it so you're just grabbing those things. Right click, make group. And now this is how we do our rotate. We grab the component, grab the tool, Grab the face and hold shift key on Windows. Go to our spot that we want to rotate about and then go ahead and turn it up 90 degrees. Almost there. So now we have some device there and you can think about us now maybe wanting to rotate that 90 degrees the other way but I'll just leave that as is. I'm going to go ahead and now use a array. So I've grabbed hopefully the right place you can see that some of the problems sometimes you're going to leave go out to there it should then find the middle I'm going to go ahead and start there hit a alt control stop here and go back notice here that sometimes when you bring in a circular device you're going to lose that center so I'm going to try it again you really like to keep that center around as some sort of construction point but we'll try it again we're going to grab that so grab the things on which you are going to act, the tool you're going to use. You're going to hold the shift along so you know a face, and then you're going to try to find that middle point, which is there. I'm going to go along using the Alt key or the Control key, say 30, and see what it does. So I'm going to end this because I'm screwed up. I'll pick it up on the next one. But what you're going to be trying to do is I'm just going to do it without I'm going to grab that, hit some point there, hit the control key, and that should then do that copy if you notice there. I'm going to go 60 degrees and then five times, and you've got, in effect, this concept of a repeating shape. And at core, we do that for this reason. If we just want to go back now to this one and have to change just one, right, it will change all these. And at core, that means if we just want to change the diameter, we're going to change this original one and, and uh, have it kind of cascade up through there. So that is not quite as good as Inventor, not even close. But if you lay things out correctly, you can quickly get some iterative design, uh, which you can then use to refine things before you go to a true parametric design. Um, thanks for listening.